Suppose I have some curve like this one. It's a curve that's given by a vector valued function r of t, where the parameter t is allowed to vary between two different numbers a and b. Now, the question we're going to take up in this video is, what is the length of that curve? As in, if I imagine that were curve which is made out of string, and I took the string and I stretched it out, well, how long would that be? In general, if I have such a curve, I usually don't know what its length is going to be unless it's something really nice, like a straight line or a circle where I can say what the circumference is. But with calculus, as long as our curves are sufficiently nice and differentiable, then we're going to be able to compute their arc lengths. There's a couple steps to this process, and the first of them is to approximate this with straight lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that a to b interval, and I'm going to break it up into n equal size segments. So my parameter has been divided up into these n different segments. And then on the graph, I'm going to plot where those points are going to go, and I'm going to draw a line segment between all those points. So in this case, I've divided the curve into six different line segments. The reason why I'm doing this is that I know how to compute the length of straight lines. So if I can approximate this curve with straight lines, and I can go off and compute all the lengths of those straight lines, then I get an approximation for the entire curve. That's going to be our plan. So the first thing to note here is that the arc length of the original curve is not exactly equal, but it's approximately equal to the sum of all of these segments, the line segments. In this case, I've drawn the six of them. But in general, you'll write it from i equal to 1 up to n. You take the sum of all of those arc lengths, the first straight line, the second straight line, and generically, the ith straight line. Now, the problem you might say is, well, hold on. How good of an approximation is this really? It, it looks OK, but certainly there's a lot of difference between these straight lines and these curvy segments. But what if I divide it up into more and more pieces? So instead of n equal to 6, what if I get n equal to 8, or n equal to 10, or n equal to 12, and so on? The larger my n is, the more ways that I break up that interval in the t parameter, the closer and closer and closer it appears that my approximation is getting to the original thing. Okay, so with that big idea stated, let's actually zoom in a little bit here on one specific one of these straight line segments and try to figure out, well, how big is that? How can we compute that? In particular, of all the multiple different line segments, this is one of them, and I will call it delta li. So it's the ith change in the arc length going between a pair of points. Okay, now if I think about this, I've got my curve. I've got these two different points, I've got the straight line between them, and these two points have a difference in x, in y, and in z. So I can put that on my plot, I can say there's a delta xi, a delta yi, and a delta zi. So my two points differ in all three components. But now I can say what the length of the straight line is, that's just a Pythagorean formula, namely the delta li is equal to the square root of the delta xi squared plus the delta yi squared plus the delta zi squared. So we've zoomed in on, on the generic i segment here. We've figured out what its length is in terms of sort of x, y, and z. And now let's put them all together. So going back to our original computation where we said arc length was the sum of these little line segments. Well, now I know what the delta li is, so it is the sum of these square root of the delta xi squared plus the delta yi squared plus the delta zi squared. Okay, now pay attention because I'm going to do a little bit of a trick. I'm going to multiply this by a funny version of 1. Remember how we took the original interval a to b and we divided it up into n little segments in the parameter t? So the width of each of those little segments in the parameter t was, let's call it, delta t. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by delta t. A funny version of 1, I'm allowed to do. Then I'm going to take the delta t that's on the bottom and I'm going to move it inside of the square root and inside of the squares, so it's the delta xi over delta t, all squared, and so on. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, delta xi over delta t, sure looks like the derivative of the x component with respect to t, likewise for y, likewise for z, it's just that I'm not yet at the point of taking derivatives, I'm still doing finite deltas. All right, so the next big move of my argument is, notice how I'm saying arc length is approximately this, because at any n, I'm doing an approximation. I've only broken it up into n different components. But 
If I want to make it equal to it, if I want to come up with a definition, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my delta t and make it smaller and smaller and smaller, or say it differently, the number of segments is going to be larger and larger and larger. So let me replace the approximation with an equal sign, and I'm going to stick a limit out the front of this. The arc length is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of this summation that I had before. Moving this up, I'm now going to do my final thing, which is replace this collection of symbols with an integral. And you may recall that we've done this many times in the past. Indeed, when we thought about what integration was defined to be, it was the limit of a sum of a bunch of areas. So again, here I have a limit of a sum, and I'm going to replace that with an integral sign. Uh, before I jump into change into the derivatives that are going to come out here, I'm going to set the notation that my vector value function r of t, I'm going to call f the x component, g the y component, and h the z component. Well, then when I go and I take my limit of the sum and replace it by an integral, what do I get is the square root of the derivative of f. That's what happened when the delta xi over delta t, it got replaced in the limit with the derivative of f with respect to t, or f prime. Likewise for y, likewise for z. So provided my vector value function actually is differentiable, I can compute these derivatives then for any one that you might give me, I can just plug them into this formula. And sure, this formula is an integral, which means that for a lot of integrals, it might be hard to actually do the integration, but you could always go and integrate it, for example, numerically as well. Nevertheless, we have a formula for arc length. If you have a question about this video, leave it down in the comments below. We're all mathematicians here. We appreciate algorithms, so let's just help the YouTube algorithm out by giving this video a like. And finally, if you want to watch more multivariable calculus videos, this video is part of a larger playlist on multivariable calculus, so you can check out those videos here, and we'll do some more math in the next video.